<laughs> give me your I did not say you should guys, die. Why did you say guys, it was my beeper? What did you mean by the beeper? What did you mean by the beeper? No, 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 What do you guys think? Uh, it's, it, look, and by the way, I got this at 0.75 times speed. It's actually faster than this in real time. Ooh, he stepped in it. And saying something like that? Who says that? I hope your beeper doesn't go off. You know, he. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to say it. I'm going to call it like I see it. He sounds like a liberal when we, people like myself, talk about voting third party. He sounds like a liberal. Well, I hope Donald Trump doesn't do such and such and such to you. Or when I defend the Palestinians, well, you're a gay guy. So I hope you, uh, I hope Palestinians don't throw you off a roof. You see the similarities? You see the similarities between the liberals and the conservatives that are in both parties? So here's the thing. Um, I feel like uh, Zionism is really getting its mask off moment. It's been happening all of 2024 primarily. Uh, Cat Williams was right when he said on Club Shay Shay that Everything will be revealed in the year of 2024. And I'm going to be honest with you, there has been a lot of revealing things. And we, what we see now is somebody like Mehdi Hassan is really seeing the extent of how much Zionism really permeates corporate media. And yet Mehdi Hassan still says that we need to side with the Zionists in order to prevent another Zionist from committing genocide. So we're going to get into this because it is very important. Um, and I'd like to share with you guys. So we're going to go into this. So there's a man by the name of Ryan Gerdusky who said something Pretty bad to Mehdi Hassan. And I want to get that. And then I want to get the follow following follow up and blowback from it. So let's get into it. If you don't want to be called Nazis, stop no, doing you're you're called called an you're you're called 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 more than anyone else's table. Yeah. And people with their no, by me. I never called you an anti okay. So the gentleman on the right is Ryan Gerduski. Um, and then Mehdi Hassan, you see on the left. Well, they're actually debating what uh, was said at the latest Donald Trump rally. Uh, Donald Trump has actually had a rally in Madison Square Garden in New York. And that was a huge rally. He filled up Madison Square Garden. But there were some things that were said that are bigoted and racist that were said there. And the gentleman, uh, Ryan uh, Gerdusky, is on the right. And he's defending basically the jokes and things that were said that were bigoted as well. And Mehdi Hassan is taking him to task on it. So I want to just set that up so you guys know exactly what this gentleman says. And so and I want to make sure you guys get that kind of context when it comes to this. So let's go back just a little bit and let's continue. Don't call an anti Semite more than anyone else's table. Yeah. And people with their. No, by me. I never called you an anti Semite. Okay. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying. I don't, I'm, I'm a supporter of the Palestinians, so I'm used to it. Yeah. So. I, well, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. The thing is, is Did that. You just oh, say I should wow. die. You... Let's, let's, let's start that back over. That's. Let's go back over again and let's listen to what Mehdi Hassan has said. And let me see if I can I change the playback playback speed. Yes. Let's slow it down. Okay. 
because we got to you got to get this. If you don't want to be called Nazis, stop uh, doing you're you called stop the you're 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 called the Nazi semite more than anyone else's table. Yeah. yeah. And people will sit there and no, by me. I never called you an Nazi okay. semite. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying I mean, I don't, I'm I'm a supporter of the public. Okay, so by me, I never called you an anti Semite. Okay. You said I never called you an anti Semite, right? So basically he's defending Israel. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying I, mean, I don't I'm I'm a supporter of the Palestinians, I'm used to it. So. Yeah, I, well I'm hope your beeper doesn't go off. The so <laughs> let's let's examine. I'm not saying or saying I, mean, I don't. I'm, I'm a supporter of the Palestinians. So I'm used to it. Yeah. So. I, well, I... And then he says, "I hope your beeper doesn't go off." I hope your beeper doesn't go off. So this is basically a reference to the beeper attack that Israel did against uh, people in Lebanon, and was that a threat? To Mehdi Hassan, or was that a just a very poor joke? What do you guys think? Because some are saying that it was a threat, some say that it was just you know a very poorly executed joke, a very a joke in poor taste. But there's a lot of outrage over this now. If it is a threat, then yes, I think the outrage is appropriate. My thing is, I think that I think that there should be outrage, but there should be even more outrage over what's actually legitimately going on in the ground in places like Gaza and the West Bank and in Lebanon at the hands of Israel as well. I think we can have outrage on both, and I think there should be outrage on both if this is perceived as a threat. Now, I had it to slow it down so that everybody can hear because people are talking over each other. So let's continue and let's go over this because Mehdi Hassan goes, what? The thing is, is Did that you just oh, say I should wow. die. You, you should not. No, I Did said, you just say no, I should be killed? No, I did not say that. No, I did not say that. No, I did not say that. Hold on. Hold on. Did you just say I should be killed? On live TV. I said I hope you're Guys, let me, let me just stop. You said you hope my beeper doesn't go off. Guys, you said I'm a new supporter of the Palestinian Hamas. Guys, let me stop. Palestinian, are you? Am I what? No, of course I'm not. I apologize. Are you a racist? So he thought that he was defending Hamas for some reason, which is always an excuse. And anybody who knows Mehdi Hassan knows that Mehdi Hassan has never defended them, even though Mehdi Hassan, had, Mehdi Hassan does not fin, defend the people who are resisting occupation, which is really beyond me, because I'm like, Mehdi Hassan, you're Arab and, and you're Muslim. But yet you're not going to defend people who are uh, trying to defend their home. But it is what it is. But the thing is, is that this guy is saying, well, I thought you were Hamas. I thought you were defending Hamas. And it's like, no. Let's continue. I apologize. I apologize. Ryan, Ryan. That's that is completely no, I apologize. That, that is completely first block. Say the Muslim guy you know should be that. blown up on TV. Don't I say But I, I I apologize. That's my sorry for 2004 and I ain't gonna mess up no more. Oh boy, you stepped in it, didn't you? And the funny thing is, like, he was just trying to defend from the same bigoted things at a Trump rally, and then he just. <laughs> oh my gosh, this guy! It's it, it's 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 uh it's not good. It's not good. Ryan is a bad hombre. Bad hombre. 
it's not good for you, Ryan. Hey, don't say then. Wow. I apologize. You literally. I thought he said Hamas. You, you didn't think I said Hamas. No, yes, I said I supported yes, Palestinian yes, rights. Yes, Why? Because when you hear Palestinian What's funny is Rudy Giuliani Hamas. said this no, yesterday, because, so you're a great guest listen. to be here. All right. Give me one today. And so at this point, this is what we're in now. This is America in 2024. Here's what I will say. Forget the racism. That's right. I should die. I didn't that's, say that, that you that, should that, die. What does beeper mean? Don't give me a fake. I did not say you should guys, die. Why did you say guys, it with my beeper? What did you mean? What did you mean by the beeper? I said, what did you mean by the beeper? No, you didn't. You said, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. At least have the guts to support your race. What do you guys think? Look, and by the way, I got this at... 0.75 times speed. It's actually faster than this in real time. Ooh, he stepped in it. And saying something like that? Who says that? I hope your beeper doesn't go off. You know, he. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to say it. I'm going to call it like I see it. He sounds like a liberal when we, people like myself, talk about voting third party. He sounds like a liberal. Well, I hope Donald Trump doesn't do such and such and such to you. Or when I defend the Palestinians, well, you're a gay guy. So I hope you, uh, I hope Palestinians don't throw you off a roof. <laughs> you see the similarities? You see the similarities between the liberals and the conservatives that are in both parties? Oh, you guys didn't know I was gonna take it there, did you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because if you're a liberal, and if you have said something like, well, I hope Donald Trump doesn't do such and such and such to you for voting third party, you're just as guilty as this guy. You're just as guilty, you're just, Look, I'm calling it like I see it. Look, this is what it is. Every single person that has ever said anything like, well, when Donald Trump put you guys in a concentration camp, don't cry to me. When Donald Trump, uh, when Donald Trump, you know, bans all your rights or does such and such to black people, don't come after us. That's the same thing as this guy basically saying, I hope your beeper doesn't go off. Am I wrong? If that's, that's what it sounds like, man. It just, I, I, it feels like similarity between what they both do, you know? Anyways, let's continue. Yeah, to support so your racist I'm so sorry. Let her bring it back. This is this is why. Ooh, you saw that look on his face. Ooh, that would he looked like a, a a shamed little boy. Oh my god. You know, you know that 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 uh that bouncy commercial where the little boy spills juice and he's all and the mom goes, That's what it's like. Oh my gosh. I wish we can do this to liberals too. Man. Anywho, let's continue. This is Hang why, on. this is why yesterday's rally yeah. was disgusting. Don't call us Nazis, but I'm gonna threaten the brown guy as a terrorist why. and kill him. Because I didn't ever say Donald Trump was Hitler. Man. But do you know who sat on a stage stood on a stage yesterday and said, I want to come to the Nazi rally. I don't have to make up words and call you something. You're saying it for yourself. And what you just said Tom right Harris here, is a apologize, but I will tell you, I don't accept that apology. And you didn't even That's say it to fine. me. I didn't say that it to was you. disgusting. But I can be offended when you don't even That's... say it to me. I'm not Puerto Rican, but I was offended by what he okay. said yesterday. And I'm offended that the uh. former president and potentially future president would allow it 
and go for 12 hours and not say, I don't care. Cause you know what, when Kamala Harris put out statements about switching of opinions, it wasn't good enough for Republicans. Why are you looking at me? Cause you said it. Why don't you I'm take this back a little Okay, so here's my rebuttal to that as well. As somebody that does not support Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, ma'am, does the genocide, does that offend you? Does building cop cities in support of cop cities across this nation, which will target mostly people that look like me, does that offend you? Does Kamala Harris throwing trans people under the bus, does that offend you? Does Kamala Harris uh, taking the Freedmen's Bank and trying to include a whole bunch of other ethnicities which don't belong in there, does that offend you? Does Kamala Harris wanting to continue to build the wall, does that offend you? See, here's the thing. You cannot sit here and morally preen about what this guy just said when Liberals are also doing the exact same thing. You can't. You cannot. Because the thing is, is like Donald Trump wants to talk about, you know, being Hitler. Yes. But guess what? You got one that talks about wanting to be Hitler and you got one that's acting like Hitler. And here's the thing. They're both horrible. You got one saying, we're going to have the most lethal fighting force in the world. Guess what? That was Kamala. If Donald Trump had said that, liberals would have been in an uproar. Oh, my God. He said we're going to have the most lethal fighting force in the world. Guess what? That was Kamala. I'm not saying that Kamala is, I'm not saying that Kamala is worse than Trump. I'm saying Kamala is just like Trump. That's the issue. And here's, here's the deal. Is Donald Trump's rhetoric reprehensible? Yes. Is his actions reprehensible? Yes. And if Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are doing the same actions, same policies as Donald Trump, does that also make them reprehensible? Yes. Yes, it does. And so here's my thing. If you're going to be offended at what this gentleman said, then you need to also be offended at the actions that people like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are also equally doing. But you keep your mouth shut. This selective type of outrage that continuously happens. And guess what? A guy like this, look, this is breeding ground for you know, all these type of Zionist thinking at these corporate media outlets. And this would happen at CNN, Fox News, Newsmax, MSNBC, ABC. And they're, and they're going to go, well, this is no place for that. You guys have bred this. You guys have allowed this to continuously happen. And you guys barely, if ever, have on somebody who's Palestinian who actually uses their voice on these programs. And even if they do, you guys don't have any Palestinian representation at your in, in your news organizations. Where's the Palestinian bureau chief? Huh? Where's the Palestinian uh, news anchor? Where's the Palestinian contributor that comes on on a regular basis? Somebody that actually talks about Palestinians having a right to exist. Palestinians having a right to defend themselves. Who is on there saying anything like that? You guys don't have that. And then you'll have people like Mehdi Hassan, who, yes, he will defend Palestinians, but he'll also he'll also condemn their resistance to occupation. 
you'll have people like Mehdi Hassan who will morally try to do pretzels, twist himself into a pretzel to talk people into voting for somebody that's still committing a genocide against the Palestinians, but yet saying Palestinians should have a right to defend themselves. You, you see how it's incongruent? It doesn't make sense. Mehdi, you're still, you're still vouching for somebody committing a genocide. Now, what this gentleman did to you was wrong? Absolutely. But you also need to look inward and reason with yourself. Why are you asking Palestinians to vote for somebody? Why are you asking Palestinians to vote for your, her, their murder of their families? Why are you doing this? Yes, be morally outraged at the gentleman that what he said to you. But also just be equally morally outraged at people like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And be morally outraged enough to say, absolutely not, they do not deserve to be rewarded for genocide. Have some guts, man. You got enough guts for this guy, but you don't got no, enough guts for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? Grow a pair. Grow a spine. My God. People on this corporate media, they will stay within the duopoly, with the two-party system, because they're so afraid of what? Miss Cackles a lot? Because you're afraid of Mr. Tangerine Man? When in reality, they're both doing the same type of policies? You guys are more afraid of the personality than you are the policy. Be like, be outraged at the policies. So Abby Phillips had to come in on a break. And by the way, uh, Ryan uh, Daruski, I think his name is, he was missing after they came back from a break. Let's go into Abby Phillips' apology. So we can go back to, okay, it's a regular play speed, okay. We're back here and before we get started, I wanna just address what happened in the last segment. First, I wanna to apologize to Mehdi Hassan for what was said at this table. It was completely unacceptable. When we get this discussion started, you'll see that Ryan is not at the table. There is a line that was crossed there and it's not acceptable to me. It's not acceptable to us at this network. We want discussion, we want people who disagree with each other to talk to each other, but when you cross the line of a complete lack of civility, that is not going to happen here on this show. It's a heated time, we're in the middle of a political season, we are eight days from a presidential election, but we can have conversations about what is happening in this country without resorting to the lowest of the lowest kind of discourse want to address that and I want to apologize to the viewers at home uh, because we want to be able to hear each other, we want to be able to talk to each other, and we plan to do that in this next segment. So let me break this down really quick, okay? Because I also wanted to address Miss Abby Phillips. We're back here and before we get started, I want to just address what happened in the last segment. First, I want to apologize to Mehdi Hassan for what was said at this table. It was completely unacceptable. When we get this discussion started, you'll see that Ryan is not at the table. There is a line that was crossed there, and it's not acceptable to me. It's not acceptable to us at this network. We want discussion. We want people who disagree with each other to talk to each other. But when you cross the line of a complete lack of civility, that is not 
going to happen here on this show. Just think about what I said earlier. What about the lack of civility when it comes to your particular anchors and talking heads that constantly defend a country that is committing a genocide, that's committing ethnic cleansing, that's committing extermination of a people, but yet you keep going on the side of the exterminator and saying that they have a right to defend themselves. Is that also reprehensible as well? Are you going to call that? Because you're willing to call out a gentleman that is uh, on the right, that is a defender and a supporter of somebody like Donald Trump, which I get, right? And that should be called out. But what about what's going on in Israel? Are you going to continuously have somebody, you know, skirt on the narrative like a Jake Tapper or a Dana Bash? And they're going to continuously defend, especially with their narratives and questioning, a an ideology or a state that's continuing a genocide and you know murder of hundreds of thousands of innocent Palestinians. Are you going to continue? to allow people to speak for a government that continuously does terrorism against a people that is occupied, against the people that is living in an open air concentration camp. Are you going to call out that? Because are you, would you allow somebody who continuously did the uh, a Nazi narrative? Are you gonna, would you allow somebody who uh, you know said that Germany has a right to defend itself in 1930s and 1940s Germany? Would you allow for that person to continuously say things like that? Are you going to continue in the well, the United States or the British colonies had a right to defend themselves from the Indian savages? You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense to me. It's a heated time. We're in the middle of a political season. We are eight days from a presidential election. Mm -hmm. But we can have conversations about what is happening in this country without resorting to the lowest of the lowest kind of discourse. Want to address that. And I want to apologize to the viewers at home. Uh, because we want to be able to hear each other, we want to be able to talk to each other, and we plan to do that in this next segment. So the gentleman that was basically kicked away, kicked off, I want to go to his page because apparently he spoke out. Uh, G uh, Ryan Gerduski. Let's go to his page really quick because apparently he spoke out against it. So this is his page, right? Um, Let me see. He made a, there he goes. So he actually wrote on Substack. So you've been banned from cable news. My best advice for future conservatives dealing with the double standard. My thing is, is that Why aren't you speaking out 
Ryan against the genocide. Why aren't you speaking out against it? It's clear that you won't because of what you said to Mehdi Hassan. When someone tells you who they are the first time, believe them. And trust to believe I'm no Democrat. Because the Democrats are all about the corporations now, just like the Republicans. So I decided to try to go to his particular substack to read what he said. Because I was like, okay, let me give it a read. So here's his substack. And it's entitled, So You've Been Banned from a Cable News Network. My best advice for future banned conservatives. This is from Ryan James Garduski. Right? And he wrote that earlier today. But you have to pay to read it. So to hear his defense, you actually have to read it. So he's literally making money off the outrage of what he did. So much for being remorseful, so much for being sorry. So now you're going to make money off of it. Can you believe it? So, was he wrong? I believe so. But also, I think that the people who are sitting at that table also need to reflect on the actions and policies that they're willing to co-sign on that's being done by an administration and look inward to what they're willing to accept. Are you willing to accept your rights being dangled in front of your face in order to accept atrocities being committed against people here and abroad? Are you willing to accept your rights as LGBTQ people in exchange for allowing this administration to carry out a genocide or this administration to allow a police state to bubble up forth in this country? Are you willing to allow this administration to dangle in front of you your rights to body autonomy in exchange for throwing trans people under the bus, in exchange for allowing other people who are the same gender as you to be massacred in an area where miscarriages have exploded 300%. Are you willing to allow and accept that? Are you willing to allow and accept someone who's willing to throw migrants under the bus and continue the destabilization that causes the migrants to come here in the first place? in exchange for your rights? Are you willing to allow somebody who doesn't give a crap about black people for your rights? And I put that out also to people who are willing to vote for Trump too, because you're doing the exact same thing. Are you willing to sacrifice others for your rights? Can we actually fight against the system and actually get what is our rights for us, retain those, and go against what the state is doing, what the empire is doing? I say, yes, you can. 
It should not be an either or. We deserve to have our rights enshrined as well as not risk the lives of other people just so that we can expand the empire. And I feel like this is what's missing out of the conversation. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.